Hello and welcome to PCI Tech TV. Geomatica 2013 improves the way you work with large projects and achieves high quality results for your image processing projects in record time. Today, we're going to be looking at high resolution DEM extraction. This is a key development area for Geomatica 2013. With Geomatica 2013, we've aimed to streamline your workflow like never before by improving the quality of results for automated extraction of very high resolution digital surface models and their conversion to digital terrain models, you'll be able to create high quality ortho products and derive useful elevation based information from the digital surface models. For this demo, we're going to be using a high resolution Plates Tri-Stereo Bundle Image Dataset over Melbourne, Australia. The imagery is freely available on Astrium's website. So now I'm going to pass over to Sean, who's going to give you the demo. Before we get started, I just want to spend a quick moment to show you some of the output and results that we can generate here and that we are going to generate in this demonstration. So if you look at my screen right now, I currently have a DSM that we generated from a Pleiades over the Melbourne area. So then from the DSM we are going to create a or filter it to create a DTM or a digital terrain model. So this is generated without any manual editing. So we may want to provide a little bit of manual editing for the water, but other than that it's a very nice representation of the bare earth of, Mel of the Melbourne area. And we are going to then use this DTM to then create or generate our orthorectified pan sharp image, which is now displayed on screen. I want to now show you what we are going to be using as inputs to create our DSM and DTM. So what we have displayed on screen right now is the backwards scanning um, image and the forward looking image. So we're going to be using these two images in order to calculate parallax to determine the approximate elevation of different features on here. So what's important to note is we have this building here, which I just clicked on, is the same building as what we have here. As you can see, it's in two different perspectives. So we can use those um, different perspectives in order to calculate the approximate height. So using Geomatica 2013's ortho engine, we can create a project that will allow us to go through the entire process of creating the DSM, converting it to a DTM, and then generating our orthorectified image using that DTM. So the first thing you'd want to do is load or create a new project. In this case, I have a project that's already been, uh, that's already ready for the DSM generation. So I'm just going to walk us through a quick, uh, a few of the setup steps required before you can go into the DSM generation or extraction stage. So the first one is setting up your project. So you would go here, basically set up the project, you would choose optical satellite modeling in this case, and we're going to be ex using the rational functions extracted from the image as Pleiades imagery is, ex is distributed with RPCs. Then you'll set up your output projection, pixel space, and as you can see it's 0 0.5 meters, so very high resolution satellite imagery, and then our GCP projection. After we have that set up, we can then input our data. So as you can see, I already have some data inputted into this project, but I also want to just show you our new Pleiades um, image support. So I'm just going to go to the folder that contains our raw Pleiades imagery. And I'm going to show you just loading one of the images. So as you can see here, the raw data is distributed with an XML file. So we can simply load that XML file, which acts as a pointer to all of our different necessary files and information. It'll ask us if we want to import it into PIX, so it will optimize processing, and it is recommended in most cases. However, in this case, I'm not going to do that. And then we can also build previews, which just makes um, GCP collection and viewing a little bit smoother. So there we have it. Now the imagery is added to the project. So very nice new sensor support. So once we have our data ingested or imported into the project, we can then perform an essential step of ground control point collection. 
So we changed the processing step, and as you've probably noticed already, it's a top-down model. So you finish one step here and work your way down. So as mentioned, we're going to perform GCP collection. Or in this case, we've already performed it ahead of time, so we're just going to examine the GCPs that we collected, just so you have an idea of the accuracy that is generally required. So we're going to put these two images side by side and compute the model. So as you can see here, we have a very low RMS error, which is, a, which is also very essential. If we click on the different ground control points that we've collected, we can see that we have a, pretty much a very identical or identical accuracy between the two images. So that's just an example of some of the GCPs that we were collecting, which are necessary to ensure that we have proper overlap between the two stereo pairs, which is essential to determine that or to enable us to calculate or the program to calculate an accurate height value. So once you have your ground control points collected, you would then move on to the model calculation step, simply perform the adjustment, and then you can move on to the actual DEM extraction from stereo images. So move down to this processing step, and we're going to the first thing that we must do is create our epipolar pairs. So we open up this simple panel here, and we have to select our left image and our right image. So our left image in this case is going to be our back looking image, and our right image in this case is going to be our forward looking image. We select the two images, and then we can add them to the table. Once we've selected them, added them to the table, we can then choose to begin the process now, or run the process at a later time, perhaps at the end of the day. So we're going to generate it now. So once you're all set up, you just simply click on Generate Pairs, and the process will begin. In this case, it'll take a few moments to generate the epipolar pairs. So now that the process is completed, we can then close this panel here, the epipolar pairs panel, and then move on to the next step, which is extracting the DEM automatically. So we can see that the epipolar image that we just generated is now added to the project. The file is online, so we can select that for processing. We then have a set of optional parameters here, such as our minimum, maximum elevation values that are acceptable for this region, um, fail values, background values, DEM detail, terrain type, so if it's hilly, so we can get more accurate results for having a bit of knowledge of the region that we're working with, the bit depth of the channel, and then a few additional options here. Now, one that I just want to spend a quick moment to go over is the applying the Wallace filter. So this is a new filter that has been added and this allows us to basically get more accurate results in dark areas such as shadow and dark dense vegetation. So in this case we want to create a geocoded DEM, so add georeferencing to our DSM. So we're going to click create geocoded DEM and then the next step is to create the output file name. So I'm going to simply click browse here. I'm going to browse for my my output folder. I'm going to call it dsm underscore platys underscore tech tv. We can choose our resolution so because we're working with 0 0.5 meter resolution imagery we can generally generate a dsm at about 1 meter resolution so pixel sampling of about 2 pixels. In this case, just for a little bit faster processing for the purpose of this um, TV episode, I'm just going to create it as a 4 meter resolution DSM. So once we have set that, we can then simply click on Extract DSM, or DEM. So now that our DEM has successfully extracted, and as we can see that it has an ellipsoid datum, so that's important to keep in mind for later, uh, we simply click OK here, we can close this panel, and now we have our DSM. So the next step that we'd want to do is perform manual edits or convert it to a DTM using our filtering DSM to DTM algorithm. 
So I'm going to click on this option here. I'm going to select the DSM Pleiades Tech TV um, file that I created earlier. I'm going to open this, choose the channel. I'm going to open up this image. As you can see, it opens it up in our focus and it automatically opens up our DEM editing panel. So we can then use this DEM editing panel in order to perform specific edits. However, in this case, we're just going to simply perform our DSM to DTM routine. So for here, I would go to Tools, Algorithm Librarian, and then I can go to All Algorithms, or I can click on Find. I can type in DSM to DTM and go Find Next. It finds the algorithm. So I can simply go Open. And now we have our module control panel for the DSM to DTM algorithm. So what I'd want to do here is check our 32-bit DEM or DSM that we uh, just extracted. And then we can choose an output file in which that will be written to. So I'm going to call it the same file name except I'm going to change DSM to DTM. I will then save that and we can click from change from the files tab to the input parameters tab. So it wants the system wants to know what is the failure value. So it's negative 100, which is what we set before, and the background value, which is negative 150. If you also want that information, it is in the channel name here. So we can see the failed value because negative 100, and the background elevation or background value is negative 150. So we provide many references for you to obtain that information. So we go back to this control panel here. We then want to know the filtering size or the tile size or kernel size of, that we're going to be using in order to look for the local minima. So in this case, I'm going to set a horizontal tile size of approximately 200 meters. We can choose it in geocoded or in pixel units. Now, if I don't specify the vertical tile size, it means that it's going to be look. Or it means it'll set a square tile. We can then specify a histogram trim as well. In which case, I'm going to leave blank. Once we have this all properly set up, we can then simply go and click Run, and we will automatically generate our DTM. The process is relatively quick. We are working with a clipped DSM. And then there we have it. So it shows up on screen as we asked it to render it on screen immediately. And we can zoom out to our DTM. So we can then now use this in order to generate our orthorectified product. So I'm going to just simply minimize that. I'm going to go back to our ortho engine project here where we left off. We can move down to the ortho generation step. In this ortho generation step, I'm just going to simply click on this third button here, which is Schedule Ortho Generation, and I'm going to choose our Pan Sharpen Pleiades image. I'm going to ask it to create a new file. So I'm going to copy the file name here, choose the output directory that I want it to go in, so make sure that it's properly set. And now I'm going to choose the DEM file. So I'm going to browse for a specific DTM. So this is the one that we just generated. We can open up this DTM. We can click on more info just to make sure that we know what the values are. So everything seems to be correctly set, except we need to change the elevation reference from mean sea level to ellipsoidal. We can then click OK. And then we are essentially set up and ready to go. We can change the resampling technique of our ortho product, say for more uh, aesthetically pleasing or smooth looks, we can go for a cubic convolution. We're just going to reset our extents. That's not a, that's an optional process, just so you have an idea about how long and how big the file is going to be and how long it's going to take to process. And then we can simply go generate orthos. All right, so as we can see, our orthorectified image has completed processing. It took about 2 minutes and 15 seconds for it to complete and build the overviews. So we're just going to close this panel now. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just load that image just to provide you with some validation. 
I'm going to take our imagery that we just generated. So I'll drag and drop it into focus. Then we essentially have our one-to-one -one perspective. We can zoom to overview if we wish. Then we can zoom down to look at a one-to-one -one image of it. And then I'm going to extract this or export this to Google Earth, just a view of the display. Let's get to export. So let's just look at the accuracy as compared to Google Earth. So if we look at the orthorectified product, toggle it on and off. Obviously certain buildings may change its perspective, but if you look at the roadway, it's almost nearly perfect with the images on Google Earth. So I would consider that very successful. So this pretty much concludes the demonstration, and thank you for watching another episode of PCI Tech TV.